Welcome to Majike District, a remote Samogitian land with a lot of hidden stories. You will find Majike District in the northwest of Lithuania, in Samogitia region. It is one of the furthest places from the capital Vilnius, with more than three hours drive away. But it is only two hours away from Riga, the capital of Latvia. The population of Majeke district reaches around 51,000 in 2022. Majeke is not very well known for those who live in the larger city, as it is so far away and it is not one of the popular places to travel to. Probably the only thing most people know about it is that there is an oil refinery factory there, which is the only one in the Baltic states. But of course, Majeke has much more than that. Let me show you. Let's start with the district capital Majeke. While the city itself is not very old, the location was inhabited for many centuries, and it was a disputed area between Lithuanian tribes and Livonia, which is now Latvia. Officially, Majeki became a part of Lithuania in the 16th century, but it actually started to grow to become a city only in the 19th century, when a railroad connecting Lithuania and with Latvia was constructed. Unfortunately, there really is no old town left today, because almost all Majeki was ruined during the First World War. But you can still see a lot of historical artifacts in Majeki Museum. The museum has a large collection of archaeological artifacts from the tribal ages, from a thousand years ago. There even are copies of some made for the visitors to touch. Another, much smaller and private museum just opened this spring the Museum of Old Gramophones. It has a large collection of gramophones and everything else related to music history of 19th and 20th centuries. There are hundreds of items here, and you can even find some of the oldest gramophones and phonographs. All of them were collected for over 30 years by a local enthusiast to get the minister soonest. It is the only such museum in the Baltics, and during the visit we can learn a lot about history of music in Lithuania and the world. At the moment, visiting is on call only, but when you get a whole private tour with all the stories behind the great collection. Just outside the city, we can also see a few more historical spots. One such is Dobari Hillforts. Some of Majeki's museum's artifacts were found here. Today, it's a nice place for a short walk with a nice view. Quite a different sight on the way out of the city is the old railway bridge built in the beginning of 20th century. The bridge that is barely standing today was of the most importance in the battles during both world wars. Today, we can still see bullet holes in its walls. A bit further from the city, there is probably the most famous place in Majeki district, Ranava's Manor House. It was built in 1833 in neoclassical style, and it is beautifully situated on the hill next to a small river. The manor belonged to Rone family, who came from Germany. Baron Antanas Rone built the current manor and expanded the gardens which became famous in the region. Not only it was large and well taken care of, the baron also established a silkworm farm to make silk. Today, the old park is 28 hectares in size, full of old and beautiful trees, including the thickest fir tree in Lithuania, which is around 150 years old. Also, the park is home to 12 of the total 14 bat varieties in Lithuania, and it is a popular place for scientists to observe them. There even is an educational activity dedicated to bats available for visitors. Another interesting fact about the manor is that it was the childhood home of the future first president of Poland, Gabriel Narutowicz, and his brother Stanislavas, who was one of the signatories of Lithuania's Act of Independence in 1918. With plenty of history and interesting stories hiding between its walls, Renavas today is open for visitors as a museum and art gallery, in where you can see its lavish late 19th century interiors and a lovely all-white library, which still has some of the remaining books from the original Rones collection. The art gallery is situated at the servants' quarters upstairs, and it has some interesting local artwork as well. After the Navas Manor, there is probably nothing to match it in the district, but we will still go to another manor, a very different one from Renavas, situated right next to Venta Regional Park, where is Pavirvite Manor. This small wooden house was built in early 19th century, 
While most large manors in Lithuania are built in popular European styles of the time, wooden manors in Lithuania follow the traditional local architecture style. Pavirvite Manor was recently renovated and the traditional decorative wooden carvings were restored. The current owner also keeps some of Scottish Highland cows, which are a bit unusual in Lithuania, but they are very cute to look at. If we follow down the river Virvice that gave the name to the manor, we will reach the entire regional park and plenty of things to see there. The park is famous for its old water mills, as it has four of them. It is unusual in Lithuania to have so many water mills in close proximity. You can see another water mill and more in my video about Akmane district, as the bigger half of the regional park is situated there. But there also is a water mill very close by from Pavirvite Manor. Gude water mill was built in early 20th century and it was used as a flour mill. Recently, the mill was converted to a hydropower plant, but the old wooden mill is left as a reminder of the old days. Further down the river Virvice, there is a nice place for a short stop, Givoli Hill Fort. Surrounded by water coming from all sides, from the river and small streams, it is a beautiful place to have a good look of the entire regional park's surroundings. From here we go to Vekšnė town, an exceptional place in Majeki district. Vekšnė, known since 13th century, holds a lot of secrets from the past. In 18th and 19th century it was a buzzing trade town with a large Jewish population. One excellent relic of those times is the authentic 19th century pharmacy. It is situated in one of the oldest buildings in town, built in 18th century. Today it is a museum where you can see the original pharmacy's documents, various tools for medicine creation and plenty of materials, ranging from the usual herbs to wolf meat and human skin belts. In the back of the building were also our pharmacy's living quarters, with all the original interiors. It is one of the very few places in Lithuania where we can see how a middle-class person lived in the 19th century. Somehow, all what I visited before were either farmers' homes or manor houses. In the backyard, there is a small pharmaceutical herb garden, which is nice to explore and rest for a bit. Just a hundred meters away, there is another museum in Vekšnė. It is a home of the pioneer of Lithuania's aviation. Alexandras Grishkevichs was one of the first in Lithuania who believed that people can fly and designed an airplane in 1855. He called it Jemaichu Garlikis and it could fly after gaining speed from a hilltop. Unfortunately, when Grishkevichs wanted to demonstrate it to the governor, it was a failure. The flight went that bad that it scared the horses which rode off the governor's carriage and Grishkevichs broke his leg. For this, the governor fired him from his job and his wife also got angry and burned the plane. As Lithuanians say, kai nesiseka, tai nesiseka. But Grishkevich's input to Lithuanian aviation is not forgotten. He also wrote a book about his plane. From the museum we go for a little walk to the riverside again to see another watermill, probably the best looking one in Vanta Regional Park. This beautiful large red brick mill was built here in the end of 19th century. At first it was used for making flour and wool felting, but in the 1930s it was converted to a hydropower plant. However, today it is closed and can only be seen from outside. But the river next to it looks great and it is one of the local favorite places to hang out and even to swim during the summer. Nearby there also is a nice hanging bridge across the river. On the other side of the river, just outside Vekšnė, we go to our last stop, an organic herbal tea farm. Probably inspired by Vekšnė pharmaceutical history, one local called Jedviga Balvočiūtė finished pharmaceutical studies and for many years worked in pharmaceutical botany field and became one of the highest qualification pharmacist provider in Lithuania. In early 2000s, she started her own herbal garden near Vekšnė. Today, herbal teas are a part of Lithuania's heritage. Here, we can buy lots of different types of herbal teas straight from the farm, have a cup of tea on the spot, as well as learn about various herbs. You can also visit the herb garden similar to one at the pharmacy, 
where you can closely get to know about all these healing herbs. In the end, it was a great experience to learn all about these interesting places and stories of Majeke district. While well, the city itself doesn't have much to do besides the museums, the district around it is definitely worth a closer look. You can easily combine a trip to Majeke district with Akmane district, especially because of the shared Banta Regional Park. See you in Majeke. Thanks for watching.